Ahead tonight, the Prime Minister's stand on the justice system. A breakdown on bail will tell you who's out for what crimes. And urban renewal on the move in the inner city. The National Report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by BTC, powered by Line. The budget debate opened in the Senate today after it passed in the lower house at about 3 a.m. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kishla Adderley. And I'm Kendino Nold. Well, by week's end, the Senate is expected to wrap up the debate. As he wrapped up the debate last evening, Prime Minister Perry Christie says his administration is taking aggressive measures as it relates to crime and the court system on several fronts. And as Cyan Thompson tells us, Prime Minister the Right Honourable Perry Christie made a big announcement in that regard last night. Prime Minister Christie announcing drastic changes that will improve the delivery of justice. Before Parliament adjourns for the summer recess, we will bring for the consideration of the Cabinet and for the consideration ultimately of Parliament, legislation to enable the appointment of up to 20 Supreme Court judges commencing September 2013 and for 12 months in the first instance, we will provide the resources. It is our hope that the courts will be in a position to conduct as many as 10 criminal trials at the same time. The Eugene DePuch Law School will also be engaged in the process. Mr. Speaker, we will spare no effort in ensuring that the encumbrances and the obstacles to a speedy trial is overcome. We expect that the Eugene DePuch Law School will be placing advertisements in July to recruit six public defenders. We are moving immediately to put that in place. Prime Minister Christie stated that technology must be fully utilized to counteract double booking legal cases. We have invested over $1 million in integrated justice software. This software has a calendaring system that will, among other things, prevent double bookings of counsel and witnesses in court. We invite the cooperation of judges and defense counsel. Justice delayed, Mr. Speaker, is justice denied. We are confident that sustained prosecution of serious matters within 12 months will send a clear message of our collective determination to break the back of crime once and for all. For the ZNS Network News, I'm Cyan Thompson. Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage says the government is taking emergency steps to reduce the backlog in the justice system. He says there are also plans to hire additional judges. But juror intimidation and a growing trend of persons becoming so-called professional jurors are also concerns. And as Janea Noel Ferguson tells us, the minister also revealed the number of persons out on bail in the House of Assembly during his budget contribution. According to Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage, criminal cases are not getting through the court system for several reasons, resulting in a number of persons being placed on bail. There are 305 persons on bail for murder. 305 persons on bail Jeez. for murder walking amongst us. 577 for armed robbery and 156 for rape. Since we came to government on May 7th, 2012 to now, there are 49 persons on bail for murder, 163 for armed robbery, and 28 for rape. Dr. Nottage also accused lawyers of playing the legal system, as oftentimes they are scheduled for more than one case on the same day. This, he says, further delays matters, but he says the government is looking to hire six additional prosecutors to hopefully speed up trial cases. 
and if judges are prepared to insist that counsel who have conflicts allow other members of their law firms to defend the matter or pass on the brief to someone else, Mr. Speaker, we, we can get rid of this particular bottleneck. Expanding the juror pool to the family islands is just one of the corrective measures being examined. Only 89 cases were tried in the Supreme Court for the entire year. It is thought that, that measures such as the ones I've introduced um, might enable us to increase it to 300 matters a year. And, Mr. Speaker, that would make a significant yeah, yeah, dent in the system. Nottage says these are just some short-term solutions to clear up the legal system, but medium and long-term goals will soon be announced. He does plan to have public consultation to come up with a community-based formula to help combat crime. Janae Nalal Ferguson, ZNES Network News. Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage also revealed in the House of Assembly yesterday that the electronic monitoring system will be revamped and police officers will have to assist in monitoring the devices as many persons outfitted with those electronic monitors are still committing crimes. We think that when the magistrates or the judges put a bracelet on somebody who's on bail, what they should do is limit them in terms of the time they can be away from their place of abode and the geographical area from which they, in which they can be. <coughs> Otherwise, the, it, it means nothing because we have had cases that have occurred. We've had many examples, Mr. Speaker, of people who have been committing crimes with this ankle bracelet on. And it not, the crime not being detected and the monitoring, therefore, not serving the purpose or one of the purposes for which it was intended. Well, leading off the debate in the Senate this morning was Leader of Government Business, the Honorable Allison Maynard Gibson, who described the budget as fiscally prudent. She says there continues to be progress in almost every sector of our country's development. Challenged in the area of crime, she says the government has an unflinching determination and plan to break its back. As Attorney General, she highlighted improvements to the judicial system, beginning with the reinstatement of the Swift Justice Initiative. Our analysis shows that prior to October, it would, on average, it would take 344 days from the date of charge to the presentation of a VBI. This, Madam President, shows that between October and December, we were able to bring the days from charge to presentation of the VBI down to 122 days. Mm -hmm. From January to date, again, by the, the result of swift justice, the number of days from charge to the presentation of a VBI has been reduced to 74 days. Wow. Now, Senator Gibson also spoke of the government's plans to improve the family court system. Well, as we talk about strengthening our family and respecting family life and family values, it seems to us, Madam President, and we agree with the family um, committee, the family law committee, that changing the environment and changing the approach to a more mediative approach that enhance the way that we dispose of family matters. Well, Prime Minister Perry Christie, during the wrap-up of the budget debate Tuesday evening, highlighted what he calls the fiscal irresponsibility and mismanagement of the payment economy by the previous FNM administration. Now, Prime Minister Christie said that this resulted in the current government cleaning up the messes of in the last budget and in the current 2013-2014 budget. The Honourable Member for Long Island is correct in observing that the 2012 2013 deficit was the largest in history. What the Honorable Member omitted to say, however, was that it was the fiscally irresponsible policies of her party that brought us to that point. Now, between the period of 2007 and 2012, under the former administration, Prime Minister Christie outlined that recurrent expenditure grew by 20 percent compared to revenue growth by less than half percent, while capital expenditure grew by 72 percent and the accumulative deficit in that period was just over $1.5 billion. 
In 2011-2012, upon coming to office, this administration faced a GFS deficit of $504 million. These, or this was over 100% greater than the previous published estimate by them of $248 million. The major contributor to the deficit was a capital expenditure which was budgeted at $280 million, but the outturn on what was spent was $400 million. In our first look at weather, high pressure system remain anchored across the Bahamas, rendering mostly sunny days and fair nights. But outside of our studios just now, we have just a few clouds, temperature 84 degrees, your relative humidity, 59% winds out of the southeast at 10 knots, barometric pressure 1,017.0 millibars. That's 30.03 inches, and it is steady. But stay tuned, temperatures around the family of islands, travel and boating forecast is still to come. The Cuban ambassador, His Excellency Ernesto Guzman, is scheduled to visit with Cuban detainees tomorrow after meeting with Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell today. The meeting was scheduled before the controversial video purporting the abuse of Cuban detainees at the detention center surfaced, but the matter was discussed. Today, Ambassador Guzman told ZNS News he wouldn't speculate about the authenticity of the video, though he did want to satisfy himself that the detainees were safe. I prefer to go there and see by myself the Cuban citizen there, you know? Mm -hmm. Once I'm there, I will speak with them, I, and they can tell me anything that they want. So and they can tell me and show me anything that they want. So with me, I think for me, it's better to go there and see them. Now, the video has sparked anger among Bahamian officials. Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell has branded it a concoction since the supposed guard seen launching the verbal and physical attack has a Spanish accent. Ambassador Guzman says, though, detainees have expressed concern over living conditions from time to time. Recent visits haven't indicated any abuse. Every time that I have been visited the detention center, none of the detain of the Cuban detainees, they have shown me any sign of abuse, you know? So, losses and this, I, I could not see nothing like this. The ambassador says at last report there were 38 Cuban detainees at the center and that repatriation requests have been made by members of that group. And those requests, he said, have highlighted what he considers less than adequate communication between the embassy, foreign affairs, and the immigration department. Fortunately, in this case, this direct line of communication failed. Mm -hmm. Until today in the morning, no one told the embassy something about this by official means, I mean. But today we have this conversation with the minister and he told me that he will check what happened in this case. Well, still to come in the Bahamas tonight, the new step in the fight against copper theft. And the next step in the fight against crime thanks to Urban Renewal. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. The last 40 years, um, here, living here in the Bahamas, having been born here and reared here and spent all my life here, uh, represents, first of all, half of my life. And during this latter half of my life, I feel very proud to be a Bahamian. These last 40 years have been a period of development, of growth. We have had ups and downs, but I feel very thankful that in the end, the good which I have experienced and which I think we all share in this country far outweigh the bad. And so I urge all my Bahamian compatriots, let us strive to continue to improve this country and let us hope that as we are now known around this entire globe, we show a country whose people are to be admired. And to all of these people, I wish you a very happy 40th anniversary of independence.
This portion of the news is brought to you by Shell Helix Ultra. Performance you can see.